We point out to you before how that Jesus Christ authorized the twelve to go into the various cities and heal the sick. He authorized seventy others also, said unto them, Into whatsoever city ye enter therein, heal the sick, heal the sick. And he told the disciples to cleanse the lepers, even to raise the dead, to cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. This was the commission to the first preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The disciples were authorized to carry on the healing ministry throughout the age and confirm it to the letter to men in all walks of life in all generations. In Matthew 28, 20, Jesus not only commanded them to be baptizing men throughout the age, but to command them to observe all things whatsoever he had commanded them. And he said if they would do that, he would be with them even until the end of the age. In Hebrews 2, 3 and 4, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which God at first began to be spoken by the prophets, was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and divers, miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. God, through the prophets, through Jesus Christ, through the apostles, through early preachers, reveal the will of God concerning man and concerning his physical welfare. And so if we are going to get the full benefits of the gospel promised and provided for us, then we will get back to the New Te Testament teachings and follow the instructions of the letter. Early disciples did confirm the word of God. Time and time again we read that by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. On other times some of them would say, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now God gave them this power to give to others, and God has never taken it away from the church. We have left the power. We've lost it somewhere. And if we'll get back to God and uh, claim the faith once delivered to the saints, God will again give to us the very power to help others that he gave to the early disciples. In uh, Acts 5, verses 12 to 16, we read that even the shadow of Peter passing over people healed them, without exception. In the sixth chapter, the eighth verse of the book of Acts, we read that they chose certain business elders because they were full of faith and full of power and full of the Holy Ghost. In the eighth chapter, we read of an ordinary business elder, not an apostle, but an ordinary business elder in the early church. He went out and preached that men should repent and healed all manner of sicknesses and diseases among the people. He cast out devils, and he brought the kingdom of God and reality to the people of Samaria. And all through the book of Acts, you'll find miraculous manifestations of God's power, confirming God's love to the heathen in all lands. In the 14, 15th chapter of the book of Romans, verse 29, Paul said this to the Romans, I am sure when I come unto you, I shall come unto you in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. So you see, early believers did confirm the word of God and heal the people, carrying out the same ministry that Jesus Christ did while here on earth. That all disciples throughout this age are commanded to observe these things, plainly on record in Matthew 28, 20, as we've said, and also Acts 1, 1 to 3, where we read that Jesus began both to do and to teach what he did, and after that he through the Holy Ghost gave commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Jesus Christ commanded the disciples to get definite power to confirm the word of God before they went out to represent the kingdom of God. In Luke 24, 49, he definitely said to them, Tarry in the city of Jerusalem, until ye be endued with power from on high. In Acts 1, 8, he also said to them, Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So many passages reveal the fact that God not only gave 
to the early disciples, but commanded them to command their disciples to carry on the same kind of program. Jesus Christ sent the Holy Spirit into the world to carry on the healing ministry. Or in Acts 1, 8, he says, Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And in 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 11, we read of nine different gifts of the Holy Spirit which he imparts to believers are members of the body of Jesus Christ according to his will. And one of these gifts is that of divers kinds of healings. In other words, the gifts of healing as it is expressed there. And another one is working of miracles. Working of miracles. And uh, you'll read that chapter, you can see that there are not only these gifts, but others which cover every known need in the human race that the Holy Spirit imparts to believers today and in all ages if they will but believe. Jesus Christ promised such power to every believer. For in Mark 9, 23, he said, All things are possible to him that believeth. And in Mark 16, 15 to 20, he said, These signs shall follow them that believe. And in John 14, 12, he said, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. These are just a few of scores of promises which cover the needs of men physically. Gifts of healing are a part of the spiritual equipment of the church, according to what we have already seen in 1 Corinthians 12. And Paul writes to the Corinthians in 1-7 and says that they come behind in no gift, in no gift. And I would to God that we had believers today who would humble themselves and at least acknowledge the simple teachings of the Word of God if they didn't want the experiences. It's a hard thing to get men and women in some churches to even acknowledge that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the same today as it was originally. And, there, and it's a harder thing to get them to even practice what they learn. Healing is a part of the church work. James 5, 14 to 16 tells us, what to do in case of sickness. Call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The Lord shall raise him up. Now, if that was to be the instruction for elders, then it was to be carried out throughout this whole age. It is always God's will to heal his children according to the terms of the New Testament. In Matthew 6.10, we're told to pray this, Thy will be done in heaven as on earth. Or in other words, in earth as in heaven. God's will should be done in both places. And we know that when we get to heaven, we will not have sicknesses and diseases and hospitals, and we will not have the defeats on every hand that we see down here on this planet. So if it is God's will for people to be healthy and victorious over these curses in heaven, then we should pray to that end while on earth. For he said, pray that the will of God be done in earth as it is in heaven. In Matthew 7, 7 to 11, we have the fact that we are assured every kind of an answer to prayer, and certainly that includes physical healing. He just simply said, Ask, and ye shall receive. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be open unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be open unto you. And he assured us in verse 11 of this chapter, how that if we are evil and know how to give good gifts unto our children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? In the 8th chapter of the book of Matthew, verse 3, a leper asked the Lord, I know you can, but will you heal me? In other words, he had the same kind of faith that people have today, this isn't any effort to but it isn't the effort to have that kind of a faith at all. People in all walks of life believe that God can, but they question his willingness. But what was the answer of Jesus Christ on that occasion? He said, I will, I will be thou clean. And I challenge any one of you to show one verse of Scripture anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ ever said, I won't, or it isn't the will of God concerning any good thing that any person ever requested of him. He taught us that he came into this life to give us life and give it more abundantly. And he healed all that were sick time and time again. In fact, 22 different times in the first three Gospels, we have the fact that he healed all the people in various multitudes that were sick to fulfill 
the prophecies of Isaiah and the redemption that Jesus, that he himself came into this world to do. Healing is definitely, therefore, the will of God. And anyone who questions that healing is in the will of God is questioning the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the provision of God, is questioning the promises of God, is questioning the benefits of the atonement of Jesus Christ. From every standpoint, we know that it is the will of God to heal every one of us who will but put himself in God's hands and believe in God with a whole heart. Jesus Christ made a promise like this one time. If any man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. And certainly God wants to dwell in healthy and clean bodies.